So I get asked the question is, how do you compete with online businesses like Amazon? And my answer to that is, don't. This is the Ask the BCE Show, episode number 28. I am your host, Kurt Belding, and I am the blue collar entrepreneur. Come on in, Kayla. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Every time. Sorry. <laughs> um, we like to joke around. We have a lot of fun. Um, but hey, you know what? You know, I started this this uh, show, vlog, whatever you want to call it, um, for two big reasons. One, to document what I'm doing in business, and the other big reason is to give back to fellow business owners like myself or anybody else that wants to start a business, um, thinking about opening a business, buying a business, just to give back. And what gives me the authority to do so is, is not the success I've had, it's actually the failures I've had. It's everything that I've done my last 15 years of business. And majority of that's small business, that's brick and mortar retails, that's, you know, um, these aren't large, you know, 800, 1,000 uh, customer, or um, 800 to 1,000 employee businesses. These are smaller businesses, but I've been through a lot with them and a lot of failures. That's what gives me the, I feel, gives me the authority to speak about what I've been through to help those out there. And, and again, back to one of the big points of why I'm doing this is to document so I can look back on what I was going through or my kids can look back at what I was going through and what I did in business or my grandkids can. So. In the uh, spirit of documenting, let me be super honest, transparent about what I'm going through right now. I've been in a bad mood last couple days. I've been frustrated, right? You guys could probably feel it. You guys haven't been here, but like I know these guys have feel it. And I've been frustrated as hell. I've been kind of pissed off, and I just haven't been able to shake it. And here's the reasons why. I'm not mad at anybody individually. I'm not mad at a person. I'm just mad that I'm not where I want to be. I'm mad at like, the categories of businesses that we're running right now is, is they were not to where I want them to be. And one thing I think that would be good advice for those business owners that are out there that are in the same spot that I am in right now is not to look so much into the future, to kind of back up a little bit, enjoy where you're at and enjoy the process. Like I want to be there so bad that I want to be there now. And I think that after three months of working on a project, and if I'm not where I think I should be, or I want to be, or I expect to be, I get pissed about it, and I get frustrated about it, and then I'm in a bad mood, and then life is this. It's a negative place that I'm in, and it's a negative life. So that's not how I want to live life, because I know that life is happening now. It's not happening a day from now. It didn't happen a year or one day ago. Life is happening right now in this moment, and to be present. So. That's what I'm going through. I got to get myself out of this negative, frustrated mood. We'll have a team meeting after this with uh, all my core guys and maybe they can help me. But uh, moving on to my next topic is if you are a brick and mortar store, um, and I guess even an online store, small business, and that's where I really want to give the value to guys. That's where my expertise is in, is the small business brick and mortar. Um, when you're thinking about competition, who is your competition? There really is no other brick and mortar competition. Right now, competition is online. Internet is the competition. Most consumer behavior falls on the internet. You can buy anything you want from your phone. That is the behavior of, I would say, 90% of consumers, maybe 80, I don't know, but it's high. And, um, I, you know, what's, how do we combat that? How do we compete with the Amazons of the world? And uh, I know we had a question in that alludes to that. So I'm not gonna give the answer out right now. I'm gonna give it out here in a little bit, but brick and mortar, small business owners, the other brick and mortar is not your competition. It's the online business that's your competition. And that's where you need to be focused at. So um, again, if you're joining me live, send me questions. This is a Q and A show, ask the BCE show. So if you guys wanna know, or if you're watching this later on YouTube or wherever I house it, reply to this YouTube. Um, and ask me a question. I'll bring it on my next week's show. So, and if you want to be on the show, I could bring you in live and you could be on the show with me um, and we could rap about business. So, that's enough rambling. Who has the questions for this week? All right. So, Rowan asks, how do you compete with online stores like Amazon and Bodybuilding.com? What should I do to win over customers? 
and what value can I give my customers that online stores can't offer? All right, how do you compete with the online stores like Amazon and, and those, right? Uh, and there's a couple other, it, it, the question kind of talks about the same thing. And, and here's the answer, you guys, is don't. Don't compete with Amazon, stop trying. You're not going to win. Amazon is enormous and you're not gonna beat them, so stop competing with them. And so how do you stop competing with them is you do something different. If you have a product, because you know Amazon's not typically, not really a service-based company, it's a product-based company. They can carry any product in the world and sell it for a lot cheaper than what you can sell it for as a small business owner. So stop competing. How do we stop competing is not to sell what they have. If you're selling the same product that Amazon has, you're competing with Amazon. That consumer, that customer that walks into your brick and mortar business is, if they buy something from your brick and mortar business that they can buy on Amazon, at one point, at any point, if they find that cheaper on Amazon, you lose that customer. So that's first and foremost, stop competing with Amazon, uh, find your own market. And secondly, it's customer experience. This is, a, the, this is number two for you. Uh, don't compete and then provide them with an experience. So that's why people shop in a brick and mortar location is for the experience that they get. And that's it. If they like you or you build that relationship with that person, they'll shop with you. But even if that experience does not equal them, like if you have a product that's sold on Amazon or another online store and you're selling it for $3 more than what Amazon has, money always wins, guys. I don't care how good a relationship you have with that customer, if they can save money and time, it doesn't matter. So you have to, if you're selling the same products at Amazon, it has to be the same price for sure. And then you gotta provide more value to the consumer than what Amazon does. That's how you win. And how do you do that? It's through customer experience. It's through, uh, we have our customer service processes in our brick and mortar to exactly, to de design exactly for that is to give that customer a way better experience by walking into one of our brick and mortar stores than they could find on Amazon and online. So if you're a small business owner out there, stop competing with Amazon and focus on what kind of experience you're giving to the customer and the value to the customer to bring them back to you. That's it, that's the answer, 100%. Was there any other part of that question or did I hit it? That's it. Okay, good. Um, next question is from Joe. Do your priorities have to change when you own a business? Does family come first or does the business? Do your priorities change when you own a business? Does family come first or does the business come first? That's a really good question, Joe. And I think a lot of business owners out there have got it twisted and got it skewed. Here's the perception. The perception is you own a business, family always falls to the, to the side, right? Uh, family gets hurt because you can't spend the time and energy on the family. But let me tell you, that's not true. That does not have to be true. I own six different companies and multiple different businesses in there. I have a ton of different employees. Like we're doing a bunch of shit all the fucking time. And what do you guys know 100% about me is my family is just as important as that business. So what do I do? When I'm at work, I'm at work. I'm 100% at work. My family knows when I'm working, I'm not talking to them on the phone. I'm not texting them. I'm not, it's not family time. It's work time. But when work time's over, it's 100% family time. It's not the time that you spend with your family. It's the quality you spend with your family. You know, even non-business owners, you're working from eight to five in some job and you go home and you're on your computer or on your phone the whole time distracted, you're not present with your family. And that's not good family time. You know, you may be spending three times the amount of time with your family that I am, but I'm actually spending more quality time with my family. That's the key, guys. That's the balance of, and, and balance is never perfect. You know, there's like this weekend we had a, uh, a, we set up a booth, had to go Saturday. I couldn't spend entire day on Saturday with my family. That's what I typically spend with my family is Saturday and Sunday. So I make it up by spending more quality time, more engagement with my family where I'm not on my phone. I'm not on my computer. I'm not watching TV. I'm playing games with my daughter. I'm taking my wife out to eat and I'm engaged with her 100% talking to her. That's how you treat family and business at the same time. They're both your priorities. Just go all in when it's business time and then all in when it's family time. Cool. Any other questions? Mm, Ben's got a question. Do you want to ask it or do you want me to? <coughs> How do you convince other B and M? Well, brick and mortar mm. to take this kind of advice? Because you know everybody's doing it right, you know. 
Mm -hmm. Everybody has their opinions of what's going on. How do you convince someone mm -hmm. to take that leap? Of this is coming from your experience you've had this weekend. Yeah, for sure. So how do you convince other brick and mortar businesses to think the way that we think, to provide value to customers, to stop competing with Amazon because you're not going to win? How do you convince them, right? You're not going to be able to convince everybody, but I'm hoping that they've gone through enough pain in their business to be have an open mind that there might be something else, right? And let's face it, a lot of business owners have a lot of ego. You know, and that's why they're a business owner in the first place, because they have a lot of ego. There's a lot of value to ego, but there also can be a lot of negative to ego too. Ego is the confidence to say, I'm gonna own a business and I'm gonna do it well. But the negative side of the ego is like, I know what I'm talking about, I'm not gonna to listen to anybody else. You're gonna fail, because things are happening and changing so fast that you can't do it alone. You need help. So, I don't know, like, you know, that question came from Ben, which is our outside sales rep on Body Rival talking to other brick and mortar businesses. My answer to you would be, 100% is build relationships, build friendships, because no one's gonna to listen to you until they know that you actually care about them and their business and you're not just trying to sell something. So like that sale needs to come way down the road. First and foremost, you put what you put forward is caring about who the, that business owner is and caring about how to make that business owner's life better. Um, and then once he actually understands and feels that, he'll actually listen to what you have to say. Then you'll actually look at the data and look at what we're doing in a brick and mortar store to say, okay, maybe you're right. Maybe I should stop competing with big online retail store or big online stores and start providing value to my customer. But here's the, the sad reality about it, you guys. Like most business owners have too much ego to listen and they don't go out of business and they're going through a lot of pain and a lot of financial hurt to realize that truth. That's it. Anything else? Mm, nothing on Instagram. Cool. Hey guys, if you like this content, share it with a friend, tell someone about it. It's all free content. I'm not asking for anything from you guys. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see all these videos. And thanks for listening. This is the Ask the BCE Show, episode number 28. I'm your host, Kurt Belden. See you next week.